This is Twit. So give us, a, give us an intro to why you wrote that paper, why you presented that paper at NAB. Well, the, the reason I wrote it is, um, you know, the, the, there's so much hype around um, – you know, 4K, there's so many, you know, when you go to NAB, you've just got lots of engineers who are just so excited about this. And, and you know, if their, if their enthusiasm could make this happen, it would happen tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, really. But, but but it's true. I mean, you know, you just hear about it all the time. I mean, everything you hear about these days is 4K, 4K, 4K. And actually it is, I mean, it really is staggering when you see it. But what I want to do is take an opportunity to actually write down and just try to look at a very um, objective view and try to actually, you know, put all my excitement about this, you know, to the side. And, <laughs> you know, kind of step through. So, you know, kind of let's, let's just look at the landscape. What's it really going to take to... To make this happen. And so that was really my goal, um, mm -hmm. you know, to really look at the evidence, to look at, you know, what could happen, all, you know, all the options and try to come, you know, to some conclusions that, that, that might help understand the speed that this might happen at, what we're going to see, you know, and, the, and you know, so that, that was really what I was trying to do. And hopefully mm -hmm. I achieved that. Um, I know that I got some pretty pointed questions in response. Um, <laughs> that's, always, that's always a great sign right there. And I spent, you know, right after the, after I gave the presentation, I, you know, I was standing in the hallway with people kind of surrounding me, asking me difficult questions for about two hours. So that probably means I succeeded at what I wanted to do, really. Indeed, indeed. So especially, you know, those engineers, most of whom, most of the people that are at NAB are engineers or technical types, you know, probably hitting you with some <laughs> pretty, pretty uh, specific and pointed questions, shall we say. Absolutely. Um, I was very interested in, in your talking about the fact that we need to be, that obviously we need to be working on hardware, we need to be working on software, but you also mentioned wetware, <laughs> which uh, sometimes refers to the human brain. And in your case, I think you were referring to human perception, right? Um, that's absolutely correct. Well, the, you know, to me, the starting point of this is, you know, is, is as I kind of sat down while I was writing this and I thought, you know, if I just went down to Best Buy and bought a 4K TV right now and stuck it in my living room, what would be the next step? How would I get content to it? And to me, you know, it really seemed like there were really only three possible, you know, ways to do that. I mean, you can get it over the air. Um, you could get it through Ethernet or you could walk into the house with some kind of physical medium, uh, you know, like a disc or something to play it back. And so those were really the only options for how you could even get the data from point A to point B, short of telepathy that we haven't, you know, kind of perf perfected quite yet. Mm -hmm. And so really, you know, <laughs> everything, everything flows from there. And, you know, so you mentioned kind of, a, you know, the, the, the human perception side of this. And, you know, the, the, that's kind of a... The, that's almost a non-technical -tech thing. I mean, you know, uh, unfortunately, we, we, we don't understand the technology of our brains, um, you know, perfectly yet. Although, you know, <laughs> we've actually made some remarkable progress in the last few years, ironically. But, um, you know, that, that's an area we don't know that well. And, um, you know, the... the the key is actually, you know, look, uh, actually, uh, uh, maybe a side note, but but my PhD was actually in computer vision and understanding how how we can try to make computers, you know, interpret images and and understand what's going on in them. So this is an area that's of actual particular interest to me. Now, you know, when you think about an imaging system, um, you know, if you have if you have a standard HD, you know, um, imaging system, you're you've got pixels that are kind of let's say, this size, you know, <laughs> and... <laughs> magnified. Yeah, magnified a bit. Um, and, you know, what you do is you have a lens that's, that's on the front of the camera and it images, you know, all the world that's in front of that lens back onto the, onto the CCD and the pixels have, you know, the, this size that I gave like that. And so, you know, there's only a certain range of that, that physical, you know, real-world image that is completely in focus. Um, that's just, you know, down to the properties of the lens. And in fact, the, the better the lens is, you know, the, t the less that distance tends to be because you like to get these very atmospheric shots that have the background out of focus and just, right. you know, a small part of the image in focus. Now, what right. happens when you, you know, reduce the size of these pixels down to, you know, this size instead of this size is that the, the range over which, you know, the, the image is perfectly in focus, the kind of the Z range over which an image is perfectly in focus at the size of the pixel becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. So 
as you go up in resolution, you know, you'd think, well, the whole image becomes clearer, but in fact, it doesn't. Um, it remains, you know, out of focus, just like it was meant to be. And the actual kind of depth that you get a true benefit of going to 4K is actually relatively small. And the smaller the pixels get, the smaller that range is. And so actually mm. something I would I would kind of, you know, invite any of your viewers to do is do a web search, look for a 4K image. Um, they're easy to find or look for even a high res. It really doesn't matter. And then zoom way in on it and see how much sharp detail there really is because most of the image, just by, by virtue of the fact you used a real lens to shoot it with, is actually going to be relatively blurred and only very small parts of the image are going to actually be sharp. And, mm. you know, that's something that's often lost on us. And so, you know, when we're talking about 4K, we're saying about how everything's going to be so much sharper, but really only a small part of the image will be sharper. Now, the, you know, the counter... Um, side of this is that all computer generated imagery, so titles, you know, 3D stuff is actually has a huge benefit of going to 4K because it can actually all be in focus. Um, or animation. You know, I mean, we, there are plenty of animated movies that are being released and th you're saying that those two would benefit from the higher resolution. Um, probably, you know, the, so a lot of the, you know, the, the animated movies, those have been designed, you know, I mean, they actually put a lot of rendering time and a lot of processing time into simulating how real lenses go. And so, you know, <laughs> there is very much depth of field in there. So they've lost yeah, you okay, know, some, right. some of the benefit of it. But, um, but, you know, titles, um, computer games, things like that are going to see, you know, you're going to notice the difference pretty dramatically, I think much more than video. Um, you know, so it's at least something interesting, you know, to keep in mind, you know, as we all talk about how great 4K is, which is, you know, a lot, on a lot of video, it might not even be as noticeable as we all think it will.